Today we're going to talk about location assessment and how that determines the quality of your light. Adorama TV presents Photo on the Go with Joe McNally, where you'll go behind the scenes to see how great photos are made. Hi, this is Joe McNally for Adorama TV. The reason I go to Adorama, it's a real store with real people and I've got friends and associates there who have guided me through all my camera purchases for years. Hi, once again, Joe McNally for Adorama TV and I'm going to refer to a portrait. You can see it on the screen behind me there. And it's one of my favorite portraits, uh, really um, a lovely lady and a very talented painter. We get called upon to do portraiture like this. We're sent, you know, to someone who is doing something interesting, be it an engineer or a, or a painter or a writer. You know, these are just generally part of a photographer's uh, assignment life, okay? Doing portraiture of people who are doing interesting things, who are talented in their own right. And it's a wonderful aspect of the job. So you walk into a painter's studio. What is the traditional way of photographing a painter? Here's the artwork, here's the painter, okay? You photograph them in front of their work. That is time-honored and oftentimes very effective. But location assessment, that has to drive you to look around, okay? I hesitate to say it's everything, but boy, is it important, okay? Because given this fast-paced world, people don't have patience or time for you to do multiple setups. So when you uh, assess a location and you place your bet, in other words, I'm gonna shoot this picture here now from this angle, that is oftentimes the only crack you get. So location assessment becomes hugely important in or relative to the success of your job. So I was looking around this painter's studio and it was a nice kind of typically messy sort of wonderful creative atmosphere. And then I looked down at the floor and I'm not knocking her paintings, her paintings are wonderful, but the floor to me was the most interesting piece of the whole place. Why? Her history, spilled paint, okay? Time gone by, you know, where she has worked and worked and worked in the studio. Her floor basically was her history. So location assessment drives you to look around, okay? That's the basic, you know, sort of operative thing you always do when you first walk in. And I did notice this floor. And then, you know, it can be a delicate segue to talking to the artist and say, you know, I really don't want to photograph you kind of with your art on the walls. I'd like you to lay down on the floor. And thankfully, she was a wonderful creative soul and she was immediately on board with that. I put the brush in her hand, just kind of, you know, the Michelangelo touch. I mean, you, ha you know, you have to have all these things rattling through your head on a very rapid basis when you're on location. And then, of course, you have to light it. You have the scene, you have the color, she's willing, all that sort of stuff. You get up on a ladder, you make a snap, you define the frame. Then, of course, you have to fill that frame with light. So location assessment, very important. First thing you do, my sense of this room was that I wanted to photograph her on the floor. That can be a delicate point of negotiation with the artist. You have to say, you know, I'd really rather not shoot you with the art on the walls. I'd rather shoot you on the floor. And thankfully, she was a very wonderful creative soul and she was immediately on board with the idea. So I had to get an elevated position. So I got up on a ladder, established the field of frame or you know the colors on the floor that I most wanted to work with, and then arranged her on the floor. And she was wonderful about it, okay? So if I uh, do a, you know, say she, her, she's there, her, her shoulder comes here, her arm comes across her, and I, you know, I kind of bring the, the paintbrush up in here, kind of an extended, you know, kind of a, a, a reach there, okay? And then she comes down here and her, her, her feet and, you know, her knees are up this way. So she's kind of um, in this sort of shape that's kind of pleasing, you know. And then uh, I'm up on a ladder, okay. So there's me up here, okay. Camera angle is about a 28 millimeter lens, obviously pointed down at her, okay. And the color is the key, right. Soft light speaks to saturated, rich, kind of evocative, almost voluptuous color. Hard really spectral light actually um, is not that colorful in some ways, okay? And the, the breath or diffusion of a light source really wraps its arms around potential color, especially muted colors like this. So my, my light source of choice was the big guy. Put a stand over here, okay? And then light stand came up here and I put up here the big boy, 74 inch, Octa, okay? It's right over here. Now, I'm not going to open it up 
in the studio. It's my baby, okay. Here, here's the thing, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm hugging this light. Okay, fine, sounds ridiculous, but it is kind of a security blanket of light. This light is so broad, so rich, so diffuse that you kind of, I have to tell you, in situations where I had no idea how to light something, I've put this up knowing that it basically makes anything look good. Now in this instance, I did know why I wanted to use it. It wraps the whole scene up, okay? It informs her with light. But given the angle and direction of the light coming from here, okay, what was happening? The back end of the photograph was rotating into too much darkness. So right at camera, kind of an almost on-camera fill, but a big soft one, I put up another light stand here and ran just a bare tube, okay, bounced light into the ceiling. Ceiling was about 12 feet. So these are big power pack lights, okay? These are not small speed lights. They're big sources. This covers her this way. The flow of light comes here. This goes straight up into the ceiling and just very weakly, okay, informs the back of the photograph back in here, all this color. Classic definition of a fill light, which is what this is, no matter how big or powerful it is, it is a fill light. And the classic definition of a fill light is a light you don't notice until you turn it off. Okay, turn this off, okay, the color that you see in the background there, the richness, the redness, goes away. Turn it back on, it comes back, but just a little bit. So once again, Joe McNally for Adorama TV. We did a bunch of things in this particular video, talked about location assessment. Uh, the soft light emphasizing color and the nature of that soft light created by a main and a fill. Okay, signing off here with a shout out to Adorama Pro. Okay, uh, the pro department is where you would go. Terrific, knowledgeable people there. Uh, Annie Cahill, Jeff Snyder. A 74 inch Octa is kind of by definition a pro piece of gear, okay? And they've got a whole range of these kinds of really big soft light sources, so go on in and talk to them about it. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 8 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.